Hi there, it's John from Commercial Real Estate Online. Welcome to the program. Welcome to Commercial Real Estate. And if you're an agent or a broker anywhere in the world, this is the channel for you because we're always sharing ideas relating to sales, leasing and property management. And this, of course, is a changing property market. There's also plenty of things for everyone to do with investors, business owners, franchise groups, developers, all of that sort of thing. So the website to contact us is commercial-realestate-training.com. Now, in this group of slides, I've actually broken down the slides into three separate groups. So for the next few days, I'll be posting the next group of slides in the series. So in this particular group, I'm going into the creating of sales of victories in commercial real estate today because it is a changing market and there's a lot you can do to grow your market share with listings, particularly for sales. So enjoy these ideas, enjoy the concepts that I share with you now, and of course establish your system, because systems create change and opportunity in commercial real estate. It is a very personal thing. It's not where you work, it's what you do about what you can in your property market. It's all very personal. So let's go into creating sales victories in commercial real estate today, part one. So commercial real estate, what's it all about? As you would know, it involves transactions, leasing, sales of non-residential properties. So you're focusing in commercial, and commercial to me means office, industrial, and retail. Of course, land as well for commercial, industrial, or retail use. So you can get involved with developers, business owners, and investors. Plenty of things there for you to do. And understand that you can and probably should specialise in a location and a property type because that allows you to convert more conversations and refine your prospecting activities. And I'll talk more about prospecting in a moment to help you get on the path to getting results with your listing activities. It is all very personal. It's all about what you do. It's not about what the market is doing to you. As a special note, the property market is always changing. That's a good thing. As the property market changes, we change our approach as agents to what's going on out there because there are always people that need help when it comes to property ownership, buying, selling, occupancy, business occupancy, all of that sort of thing. And that is why you get involved with change and opportunity in any property market in commercial real estate. So let's go further. Property listings require careful research, analysis and strategic marketing to attract those potential buyers or tenants and also investors, the sellers of property as well. So your research activity should be happening every day. It is always there for you to do, connecting with the right people in the right way. Now, connecting with people is a discipline because you can always refine your system of brokerage with connecting with people. It's a branding thing, if you like, because you are connecting with people and growing your brand. Most of the people that you talk to today won't really need commercial property help. But as you talk to them over time, every 30, 60 or 90 days, depending on who they are and what they own, you'll eventually be there for them at the right time when they need information or want to advance their activities to a meeting Maybe they need some help with buying, selling or leasing. Whatever it is, you can work with that. So there is a personal process behind successful listings. It does include, of course, property evaluation, competitive pricing, effective promotion. Now, as agents, we sell and lease properties. That's what we do. That's what you do. That's what I do. In saying that, we have to be marketing specialists. So... Selling or leasing a property is not an experiment in business today. It's actually doing certain things in a particular way to encourage inquiry from a target audience. Now, that target audience needs to be defined, tuned into the marketing campaign, and then attracted. And that's why 
you can and should ask for exclusive listings every time in what you're doing. Now, some agents I know struggle with the exclusive agency thing because A, they're not experienced enough or B, they don't know how to sell the exclusive agency strategy. Now, I can talk more about that in the other slides which follow in this series, but I will say to you now, if you are good enough, your services are good enough, your skills are good enough and your knowledge as well, it will not be hard for you to convert exclusivity. And how long do you want exclusivity for? Typically three or four months, because sometimes properties take that long to attract activity. So be prepared to put in the hours, put in the work, get systemized. There's that word again. Get systemized so you can grow your real estate business around your activities. As I said before, it's a very personal thing. No one else can do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. So let's go further. What you'll be doing is tracking inquiries from interested parties. And of course, they must be handled professionally with prompt responses and accurate information. Now, as you have listings coming into you over time, you will get inquiry from your online adverts, from the newspapers, whatever you are using to promote the property. As part of that as well, you should do a fair degree of direct marketing. That is talking to people locally about their property needs and challenges. So direct marketing is totally separate to every other marketing channel. Direct marketing is chasing people specifically in a location for a particular reason. And that's a big part of what we do as well as agents. So let's go further. As an agent, you can now see that there's things that you must do every day. And I would encourage you to craft a continuous plan to generate and maintain listings. Now, agents would call that prospecting, of course, prospecting for new business. And that's what we do. We prospect for new business. An agent that doesn't have enough listings is an agent that is not prospecting enough in the current market conditions. I'll go back to my point earlier. It doesn't matter what the property market is doing because the change and churn of the market is your opportunity. I would encourage you to get involved with the change and churn, adjust your conversations, your calling, your meetings, your email dispatches, your connections with people because the property market is always there. The agents that fail to win the business are the agents who fail to adjust. Any agent that's looking to thrive and grow in a property market, even that which we have today, which is a good changing market all around the world, to get involved to extract listings from that market, it is about conversations. It's not about social media. It's about conversations, followed by meetings. Social media is a C-class activity for agents and brokers. Sure, you can do it. I get that. But the best way to win listings is through conversations and meetings. How do you do that? You do it through a prospecting process, and that is going to give you a consistent flow of ideas, people, conversations to win listings. So to ensure a consistent flow of new listings throughout the year, your plan is going to help you. And as part of that, you should be implement, implementing strategies to attract and retain clients in all seasons. Now, clients were actually prospects before they became clients. So you must look at things that way. You have suspects who can be just about anybody in the market. You'll talk to a lot of those people every day. Then you have prospects who are people that you are going to talk to or have spoken to who have some prospect of being a client for you. And then through your contact process, you start to win the business with them. And then, of course, they become a client. Going further. So there is a networking importance here. Building and nurturing connections for your long-term success in the real estate industry. It's all about leveraging leveraging meetings and conversations. So what you do is you generate 
success through relationships. You build those relationships initially from a cold call, then advance it to some sort of meeting, an email campaign, an ongoing campaign of connecting with people at least once every 90 days. That's why your database is the foundation of your real estate business. Most of the business you create will be through your conversations and the opportunities that you put in play every day. So let's go further. Maximizing networking opportunities. That's for you as an agent or a broker in your location. How do you do that? You create some tools to organize your contacts, staying updated with the latest information. Now, the latest information for you will be the information from the market. That is rents, prices, occupancy, buyers and sellers activity, inquiries, that sort of thing. But the tools to organize your contacts, what are they? It's going to be some sort of list management system. And that will be a CRM process, perhaps. It'll be a database. Now, if you don't have a good database running now, something that's up to date, accurate and growing all the time, then you've got an issue. So you've got to look at using something to get you creating a list over time. And at the very least, you can use Google Contacts or the equivalent on the iPhone. So that's a contact list. You just need to create some categories within the list so that you can, once you've spoken to someone and entered them into your contact list, you can then categorize them to certain groups. For example, investors, business owners, franchise groups, developers. And you can do a lot more as well, but those particular groups will help you tap into opportunity when you need to revisit investors or go back in the contact process to someone you've spoken to 90 days ago. So it's all about maximizing your networking opportunities and connecting with potential partners and clients. Now, the word partners is good. You'll say, well, who's a partner? You know who clients are, of course. You know who that person is. But who are the partners you can connect with? Well, the most valuable partners in our business as agents anywhere in the world will be accountants, financiers, and legal people, lawyers, solicitors. All of those groups have clients themselves who are property people. And those property people will need help from an agent who is qualified, knowledgeable, and holds a good market share in a particular property type. And that's where you can step in. So I'd like you to think about connecting with the partners in your location, such as property lawyers or property accountants, that sort of thing. So you're efficiently managing and maintaining a database. You're keeping track of the interactions and the follow-ups. As I said earlier, you do need a database of some sort. Don't stress about getting the most expensive database on the market. Only stress about getting something going that's useful to you. I like to recommend that a database or a contact system is easy and quick for you to use. So it's there on your phone when you want it. When someone calls you, the name pops up, you know who they are, before you even answer the phone. That's important. That's why something like Google Contacts or or your iPhone contact system will be very good to get you going initially. So streamline the processes that you do every day. Don't make your real estate life hard. Make it specific and do systemize it. The top agents do certain simple things every day. They know that the simple things will give them the results that they need. So what are the things that you need? Obviously people. Listings, transactions, inquiries. So think about what I've said here regards getting that database going for you and work with that comprehensively. So you could say it's all about creating your personal brand in your market, and it is. The benefits of creating a personal brand are always there. It allows you to stand out in a crowded market. Now, there are likely many other agents in your market that Circle the clients and the prospects that you are circling as well. So your personal brand has to be better than that of your competition. So how do you stand out? 
typically you would specialise in a property type and a location and go deep into the contact processes. A strong personal brand can help you attract better job opportunities, listings of course, or clients. Having a personal brand builds trust and credibility with your audience. Now as a special note there, it takes about three connections with the same person to get to a meeting opportunity. After three conversations with a person, perhaps once every 90 days, to talk about the market, the person starts to remember you and it is then time to ask for the meeting. Simply to talk about the market and share information in a PDF form that you can talk through, have some charts and graphs to talk through. It's that simple. So there is a challenge of getting your personal brand going. It requires time and effort to establish and maintain. Now, lots of agents use social media. I get that. But I did say to you earlier that social media is a C-class prospecting activity, and it will always be that, because it is not one-on-one. It does not create conversations. It just lets the person see that you're active in the market. Your personal brand may limit your flexibility or ability to explore different career paths. I get that. So your personal brand must be specific to a personal brand, a property type, a location, and you should focus into that. For example, you might be a specialist in properties that align with allied health and uh, medical type people. Lots of agents specialise in that. Other agents would specialise in service stations, petrol stations, or perhaps child care centres, or perhaps investment property being occupied by tenants, and that could be in the class of industrial, office or retail. So that's the challenges of getting your brand underway. It is something you need to think about and then get going in your activities. Think about the slides that I've shared here for you to help you get anywhere in your market. So that's the end of this particular first group of slides. I'd like you to think about these slides and go deeply into the comments that I've made because there are likely to be things there that you can do to improve your profile as an agent in the location. There is absolutely no point in being generic and ordinary in commercial real estate today. Be specific, be driven, be experienced, be knowledgeable, and specialise. So in closing, the website for us is commercial-realestate-training.com. The slides from today's program I'm going to post on the website later today so you can get these slides download them as a pdf and use them as a prompter for your real estate career and of course subscribe whilst you're watching this particular program because there are two other groups of slides in this topic that i will be sharing over the next few days but in the meantime this group of slides will be posted at the website today commercial-realestate-training.com this is john john highman from Commercial Real Estate Online, thanks for listening. I'll catch you again in the next program. Catch you soon.